What's up guys, Dylan here from Veteran Aquatics and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a top five. Today we're going to do the top five pieces of advice that you would give to a new fish keeper from Veteran Fish Keepers. As always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you in a second. <laughs> So number one, so this is um, in no particular order, but the number one piece of advice that was recommended for new fish keepers, make sure you do your water changes. So it's going to depend on the bio load of your tank and the size of your tank, what kind of filtration you're running, but make sure you keep up on your water changes, right? So for me, I do about a 30% water change every week or so. Um, other people that have super heavily stocked tanks may have to do 40-50% every week. Um, some people that have large tanks that are lightly stocked might have to do it once every three weeks. It really depends on what kind of fish you keep, and it really depends, again, on the filtration. So number one, do your water changes. So number two. Um, again, these are in no particular order, but do your research before buying fish. So too many times somebody has brought home an Oscar, put it in a 20 gallon tank, and quickly realized Oscars don't fit in 20 gallon tanks, right? They get huge. So do your research. Know what kind of water your fish needs, what kind of food your fish eats, and know the tank size requirements, you know, know how big they get. So if you don't know what every fish in this tank is already, but you think they're cool, you would absolutely have to do your research. So this is a jaguar cichlid. They can get up to, you know, 16, 17, 18 inches long. They get huge. This is a 6 foot long, 125 gallon tank. But, you know, two of these fish and your tank is stocked. Right? Same thing for uh, the pike cichlids down here. The Crinchiculata strigatas or the black striped pikes. These guys, 16 inches. Right? So do your research. Know how to take care of the fish that you're going to, you know, be getting. It's one thing, you know, when you're just starting and you get some guppies and throw them in a 10-gallon tank. But it's, it's a very different thing altogether to get something like an Oscar or a Jaguar cichlid and, you know, throw it in tanks that's just too small for it. And then you end up with one of two options. You either get a bigger tank or you get rid of the fish. Either that or your fish becomes stressed out to the point where it no longer lives a healthy life. So do your research. No, you know, the water requirements, the food requirements, filtration, tank mates. Make sure you guys, you know, Google's an amazing resource, so is YouTube. Even if you just go through my channel, there's a ton of stuff on here that a lot of you didn't, you know, don't know. A lot of stuff that I didn't know. I'm not an all-knowing fish keeper, and I'm constantly learning. So that's the biggest thing for me, is I would always say, do your research. Number two. So this is number three. Right, so number three, one of the top things that you would want a new fish keeper to know. Um, this one's actually, you know, pretty simple, but take your time. Do not rush, right? Just take your time when it comes to the hobby. Um, some people start to get one tank, they see all these cool fish online, and they start buying tanks, and they start buying plants, and fish, and shrimp, but they still haven't learned enough about each individual animal to keep it right or they didn't take the time to cycle all their tanks properly right so they get all these cool fish in from aquabid they spent two thousand dollars and three months later you know seventy percent of them are dead and that's happened we've all you know got overexcited and walked into something too quickly you know walked across the street without looking both ways so to speak but just take your time you know don't rush anything do it right if you're like me i'm going to be building a new fish room shortly a, a very large one so I'm going to have to take my time, plan it all out, make sure I make the most efficient use of the space, um, run the central air system, auto water chain system, all the stuff that I want to do, that's going to have to be in place before I can take the myriad of empty tanks I have and put them in the fish room. So number three, take your time. So number four, keep whatever you want. Um, so many people fall into the trap of fad fish keeping, where something is considered cool, 
it's popular in the hobby right now, everybody's keeping it, everyone wants it, so everyone runs out and buys it. Don't ever buy something just because other people like it, right? Especially a live animal. These are pets that you're going to have for hopefully a long period of time to come, so make sure you're just keeping whatever you want. You know, this is a really fun hobby, and it can be a really rewarding hobby too. Just make sure that you keep whatever you want to keep, and, and don't ever keep something just because it's the cool thing. Now, that said, don't ever not keep something because it's super mainstream, you know? Yeah, everybody's got bettas, but bettas are awesome. There's a reason why everybody has them. You know, guppies are cool. If you've never had guppies before, I would definitely consider keeping them. So, just because something is or isn't cool, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's your hobby, these are your pets. Buy and keep whatever you want. Number four. Number five. So, the fifth thing I would want to tell a new hobbyist, um, don't mess with your tank too much. Right? So, anybody that goes online is going to see water parameters, water parameters, water parameters. Now, water parameters are important, but it's even more important to give your tank the chance to get established and to set itself up to handle the bio load of the tank. So don't go in there all the time changing stuff and doing super thorough gravel vacuums and completely cleaning out your filters, right? There, there's a process to this whole thing, so it goes back to take your time, right? So take your time and don't mess with your tank too much. Make sure you cycle your tank, right? Give it its time to get ready for fish. And then once you do get it set up and established, don't mess with it. Do your water changes, do your, you know, gravel vacs and stuff like that, but don't be in there chasing certain parameters. Your water's going to settle at an eventual point. Fish do better with stability than, you know, you trying to chase that perfect pH for them. Most aquarium bred fish can handle a fairly wide variety of pHs. The only time you run into a really hard time with it is wild caught. Alright, so number five, don't mess with your tank too much. Let it be. And I have one more, this is a bonus tip. Um, do not buy everything that everyone tells you that you need to buy necessarily, right? So I see like Fluval FX6 canister filters are the big thing, you know, they're like 350 bucks. Um, super, super expensive for filtration, you know. Uh, I can make a canister filter out of a five gallon bucket that costs me 20 bucks to make. Um, so there's more than one way to do something and, and don't just run out and buy things because people say it's the best, right? They're not necessarily wrong. The Fluval FX6 is a good canister filter. It will, should last a long time, right? But I can get a similar effect for a much cheaper price just by doing a little research and being willing to kind of DIY my own stuff. So if you're new to the channel, this is a DIY channel. I try to DIY as much as I can. I've built all the stands. I put together some of the lids on these tanks, um, all the filter media and substrate and stuff I use is all bargain stuff. You know, I'm, I'm not going out and buying uh, super, super expensive stuff. I'm a working guy, you know, I have a family to take care of. I love my fish, but at the end of the day, you know, if I can save money on the fish, I'm going to save the money on the fish. So that said, don't be super cheap and skimp on things if you don't have to. Or if, if, if you have to, right? If you need something and it's expensive and that's just the way it is, don't cut corners. Um, but if you can do it yourself, learn to do it yourself. It's, it's much better that way. Alright guys, so that's it. That is five things that um, veteran aquarists would like to tell new fish keepers. Uh, along with the one bonus tip. Now if you were wondering about that beta rack, those are .6 gallon tanks. These are um, juvenile betas that I got from a gentleman locally here and they're doing fine you know they get a water change every day um, about 70 percent they get fed every day the room in here is very warm so they're up to temperature so please don't worry about the betas uh, I just needed somewhere efficient to keep them um, so those 0.6 gallon containers are actually pretty awesome they're actually plastic packing containers now these betas cannot and will not stay in here for their entire lives a beta needs a tank bigger than a half gallon. Ideally, a full-grown beta fish will have a five-gallon tank to itself for a male. Females, you might be able to get away with a sorority. Um, I may attempt it with some of the females that I have in here. I may not. 
but I do have five gallon tanks for all of them. Uh, I just picked up nine of them the other day. So I just need a couple more and I'll be all set for five gallon tanks. They will all have their own five gallon tank. Because of moving, I don't want to set up all the tanks, but I couldn't pass up the opportunity to get a hold of some really beautiful locally bred betas. So that's why I took them. But yeah, they're just packing containers. Uh, I think it was like 95 bucks on Amazon for them, for 25 of them, which is awesome because they can be used as little grow out tanks. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to end up using them for. But that's it, guys. Uh, five things that veteran aquarists would like to tell new aquarists. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.